Hey, in this lesson, we take a look at the area of rhombuses and kites. Now, this is a kind of unique formula because we aren't going to focus our attention on base and height like we have been with our other polygons. Instead, we're going to take advantage of the fact that the diagonals of both rhombuses and kites have this special property that they make right angles where they meet. So in other words, they're perpendicular. And because of that, the diagonals can help us find the area a lot quicker, a lot easier than trying to focus on base and height. The way it works is this. You'll remember that the diagonals are the distances across. And so on any kite, we have two diagonals. We've got diagonal one, which is in this particular one, our long one. And we've got diagonal number two, which is shorter in this case, forming the rhombus. Now, if we take those diagonals and we use them to split our rhombus into four right triangles, remember those four right triangles are congruent triangles, all equal. So something kind of cool happens. What we can do is simply rotate the region formed by those triangles around the hypotenuse. And lo and behold, what do we get? Well, let me get this last one. This is a little bit tricky. And you'll have to forgive it's not perfect, but you get the idea. We get an overall shape of a rectangle. And so this rectangle, we know a simple formula for finding the area of a rectangle, right? You'll remember it. Its area of a rectangle is its base times its height. Well, in this case, the base of our rectangle is the same as diagonal number one on our rhombus. So let's use our diagonal number one to be the base. The height of our rectangle also corresponds to a diagonal, diagonal, diagonal number two in this one. So let me put that in as our height. Now, this area that I've got so far, just multiplying the diagonals, is the area of the rectangle. Well, of course, we want the area of the rhombus, so how do we get the area of just the shaded portion? You can probably see that it's just half of our rectangle area. So if we can put in a 1 half in there, we have the area formula for a rhombus. The area of a rhombus can be found by taking half of diagonal number 1 multiplied by a diagonal number 2. The same is true for a kite. In this kite, I've already formed the rectangle around it. So the distance across the bottom here, let's say that's diagonal number one of the kite. Do you see the same thing right here in the kite? And then the diagonal number two, which I'll draw out here, is also the height of my rectangle. But my kite is only half of the area of the rectangle. So the area of our kite, just like our rhombus, is only half of the multiplication of diagonal one and diagonal two. Let's use it in a problem. We're going to find the area of this kite, and they gave us the lengths of the diagonals. And it's kind of standard to kind of put those diagonals on the outside so there's no confusion about exactly which segments are which. So pulling our formula in, it's going to be half of diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. And let's say diagonal 1 is the 7 and diagonal 2 is the 12 feet. So we've got half of 7 feet multiplied by 12 feet. Okay, pulling that in, we've got, that's going to be half of, this is right here, this is 84. So half of 84, I'm getting 22, no, I'm not. Half of 84 is 42. And then don't forget those feet. Those feet multiplied by these feet, again, give us those typical area units of square feet for our final answer. Okay, here's a rhombus example. We're going to find both area and perimeter. So let's start with area. Let's say the area of our rhombus we need to take half of diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. Uh, in this case, though, we don't have all of the information for those diagonals. We're going to have to do a little thinking. But we do have the tick marks. You'll remember a rhombus has bisected diagonals. So if it's 4 inches here, it's also 4 inches here. So that would tell me that diagonal 1 would be the full length corner to corner right there. Let's put in 8 as diagonal 1. So bring down that half, 8 for diagonal 1. All right, now let's go to diagonal 2. Diagonal 2, I don't know anything about it. So this is a pretty typical thing that will happen with these rhombus problems, and we've seen these before. Because we make the right triangle, we are going to have to use some right triangle measurement to figure out this portion. So it's something here, 4 here, and 5 here. This is going to be right triangle Pythagorean theorem. It sounds like a triple to me. It's a something 4, 5. You probably know it as 3, 4, 5. Okay, so this is 3, and then I'll match that over here for a full length. What's the diagonal 2? Full length of diagonal 2 would be 6. Okay, so multiplying this out, I'm going to take half of 8 times 6. That's going to give me 24. And then units, don't forget the units here. We've got inches, so let's 
Remember, these are going to be square inches on our area. Okay, we're not done without perimeter, so let's go with the perimeter of this thing. Now, the perimeter is, of course, this distance around it. So let's take 5 inches. How long are these other sides? Guys, you got to remember this. It's a rhombus, 5 inches on every side, since that's our definition of a rhombus. So four sides, each of them is 5 inches long. We're going to just get a total of 20 inches on our perimeter. Oh, this is a real kite. Awesome. Okay. So on this kite, we're going to find the area again. Just jot down that formula so you can start learning it. It's half diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. And let me get ready to plug some things in here. Fill in some blanks for those diagonals. Okay. Uh, this is a little confusing. Let me clarify. This 6 inches is this distance here. How long is my diagonal? Well, I don't know anything about it, not any direction. So again, right triangles come into play. Let's take this blue one here. I'm missing this piece. For now, I'll call it x. So x and 6 and 10 form the three sides of a right triangle. Something, 6, and 10. And I'm on the hunt for a triple, because I like to use those instead of Pythagorean theorem if I can. Well, 6 and 10 are both even. That means 2 goes into them. In fact, 6 is 2 times 3 and 10 is 2 times 5. So here's that triple again. It's 3 and 5, and there's the missing one. 2 times what? 3, this is going to be 4, 5. 3, 4, 5, triple. So that means our side labeled x, that's really 8. Let's put 8 in our picture. And let's copy it over here. And then let's think, OK, well, what's, all, what's our diagonal number 1? All the way across, 8 and 8 makes 16. So that can go in this spot. Now diagonal number 2, we already know a piece of it is 6, but we don't know the other piece. And this symmetry is not here. This one got bisected with double eights, but this and this have a short and a long portion. So let's use our Pythagorean theorem here on the lower triangle, this yellow one. 8 and something and 17. So it's 8 something 17. Is that a triple? If you've memorized your triples, you'll recognize it's 8, 15, 17. If you haven't memorized your triples, you better set up a Pythagorean theorem. 8 squared plus, let's say, y squared equals 17. And you better work that through. You're going to get 15. OK, so in my picture, I've got 15. Now let's take the whole diagonal all the way corner to corner. 6 and 15 combined makes 21. Alrighty, so I'm ready now to calculate this. So half of 16 multiplied by 21, I'm getting 168. And then I don't want to forget my units on this. This is going to be inches squared. One last practice problem with the diagonals, this time a rhombus. And then let's read through it. One diagonal of this rhombus is twice the length. I'm going to underline that. It's twice the length of the other. The area is 169 square inches. So find the length of each diagonal. Interesting. OK, so what are they saying when they say one diagonal is twice the length of the other? They're trying to tell us that we have a short one, of course, and we have a long one, but the long one's double the size of the short one. So if we label this one as x, then this diagonal would be 2x. Let's get those labeled, and let's see how our formula can help us. Half the diagonal 1 times the diagonal 2. Now in the area spot, let's pull this 169 as our square inches for area. 169 is equal to 1 half of diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. So plugging in for diagonal 1 and x there, and let's put it as diagonal 2. Let's put our 2x. OK, we get to solve for x, of course. So what's half of x times 2x? Well, here's something to always be watching for. Multiplying by 2 and multiplying by a half is just a ninja thing. Half of 2 is just 1. So this will become just x times x, or x squared. And then I'll bring down my 169. All right, you know what to do here. We're going to square root both sides. That will give me 13 as the square root of 169, and this will be a plain old x. So x is 13. That's the diagonal length right here in my picture. So one of my diagonals is 13. This would be 13 inches. And the other one is twice 13, so 2 times 13. This diagonal is 26 inches. And we found both diagonal lengths. So there you have it. Use those diagonals as a nice way to find the area of a rectangle or a rhombus.